Good morning, everybody, and thank you all for coming to the Today's Restaurant News Networking Group. We are a group of vendors to the restaurant industry who are here to help each other and also to help restaurateurs if they have a problem that they can't seem to solve. Uh, they're welcome to join us at the meeting or by phone at 561 620 8888. Uh, I just, right before the meeting, I got a call from somebody asking for help, for help on something from one of our members. We don't have a particular member uh, who does what he needed, but I was able to help him. And that's what we do. We try to help people. Um, I want to introduce Glenn again, Glenn Geringer. Did I pronounce that right? You got it perfectly right. Okay. Uh, Glenn and I spoke during the week, and he's all excited to come, and I arranged it so that he, uh, the path was open. And uh, just, Glenn, what we do at this part of the meeting is we go around the, the screen, and we introduce ourselves with contact information so that people who are watching on our YouTube channel today's restaurant can uh, know who we are and what we do and uh, give us a quick intro as to what you do and i'll double back to you so that you can give us something in case you forgot it all right i appreciate it uh, my name is glenn Geringer. i'm the senior director of sales and marketing for a company called worksite what worksite is is we're a peo professional employer organization um the reason I want, wanted to join this group is we do about 50% of our business is restaurant and hospitality. So this was a perfect segue to reach out to Howard to talk to him about it and to work with others in order to create referrals back and forth. Uh, you know, just by looking around, you know, there's a lot of businesses here that, you know, we, we could totally work in concert with each other and provide referrals. And so I'm excited to, you know, be looking and joining this group and hopefully we'll find um, some synergy. I'm, I'm sure you will. Okay, thanks and welcome aboard. Thank you. So let, let's do our intros. Let's uh, give us your, your name, what you do, and how we can reach you. And let's start us off with Darren. Good, Good morning. morning, everybody. Darren Gull with Tracy.net. That's T R A C I.net. Tracy's an acronym for transmit, receive, and communicate information. What we do is we solve phone and internet issues for businesses and restaurants. Uh, we come in, we work with all the major carriers. We help analyze your current bill, make sure that you're not overpaying for services that you have, and help you find features and functionality you may not know you need. So we come in, identify pain points, find the right solution within your budget. Darren Gall, Tracy.net. You can also reach me via phone at 954-354-7000 or online at TRACI.net. Okay, thank you. John McCabe, good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm John McCabe. Sorry, you can't see me very well. I'm in a Baltimore airport. I work with Carpet Johnny as part of the Ollie Group, and we specialize in making ice cream, gelato, and specialized pastry equipment. We also distribute ESA display cat cases for uh, ice cream, gelato, and pastry, as well as their carts. I can be reached at John M at Carpajani USA.com or 401-368-6406. Have a great day. And just as a, an aside, John will be at the Florida Restaurant Show next week in the Carpagiani booth. Darren Gull will be at the show as well. You can probably reach him at my great. booth at 317, and I'm sure he'll be around. And our next speaker, John Bunn, I think he'll be at the show as well. Uh, so, John Bunn, why don't you take over? Good morning, everyone. Uh, Glenn, welcome. Thank uh, you. My name is John Bunn. I'm with the BH Bunn Company. We manufacture the Bunn string tying machines to secure bundles and all sorts of different products. Uh, we've been around 115 years manufacturing here in the United States. Our website is www 
buntyco, spelled B-U-N-N-T-Y-C-O.com. Email is info at buntyco.com. And I'm going to be in booth 1101 with the Cheney Brothers uh, for the pizza restaurant show. Thank you. That's at the pizza show, right? Or the, yes, the Pizza Summit in Orlando, yeah, November 9th and 10th. 9th and 10th, right. And Mr. Mulholland and Chris Rodriguez and Kevin Anderson, all from the, the what do they call the Three Amigos? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Whoever you want to start three, off. Three, uh, yeah. the oh, yeah. Three Musketeers. <laughs> you guys, you guys flip a coin. Which one goes first? Well, uh, first. Chris. Yeah, uh, strategic supply chain partners. We function as an outsourced purchasing department for our clients and save them 20, uh, uh, tons of money. I got one example that just came up on our team call this morning. Client in Houston that has been with the same, same distributor for 30 years. Uh, we've identified a $20 a case savings on potatoes, which is worth, Kevin, how much did we say alone? They're, they're, they're buying 1,000 cases a month. Yeah, 20,000, one product. And this is because people get stuck in relationships and they think they can't do any better. We come in and sit the distributor down, sit the suppliers down and go, game's changing. And immediately we start seeing better pricing. But $20 a case on a thousand cases, one product is insane. Uh, and we're doing this with every client we have. So uh, we're excited to help people improve their business model. Uh, that 20000 a case translates to two equipment packages for new restaurants for these guys. And, you know, we just create opportunities for people to grow their company. So uh, I know a lot of y'all, you know, focuses on top line sales, but, you know, a well-managed company drives sales and controls profit. We just happen to be on the control profit side of the equation. So, Kevin, anything you want to add to that? Nope. We, you know, we, we're functioning as an outsourced pur purchasing department for all our clients. Um, we, we own, help them to uh, identify opportunities within their company. Um, we take a lot of ownership in the process and we are saving our clients enormous amounts of money uh, on a lot of the different P&L line items. Uh, we start with food and work our way down the P&L and, and uh, you know, been very effective in finding lots of savings along the way. So, uh, you can look us up at www.ssc.partners. Uh, our website gives a lot of information about us or call uh, myself at 407-497-9495. And don't forget our referral program. So there's some trickle money, mailbox money, as Mick would say, you guys can get from landing a decent size chain of restaurants. That is correct, John. Chris, did you want to give your number? 985-778-1515. And John? Mine's uh, BR549. Huh? You remember that one? <laughs> <laughs> That's from Yeehaw. 783 You have to dial in that order, though. <laughs> What a character. I'm just saying so cool. uh, all right. <laughs> all right. How about Robert? Good morning. Hey, good morning. I'm the only Robert. The only there's one. Like, there's like 20 Johns. I'm the only Robert. Okay. My name is Rob Smith, and I solve uh, labor shortages for small to medium sized, fast, casual restaurants. Uh, small business owners are tired of placing ads, doing interviews, training and retraining people, people taking six days and vacation days and smoke breaks and offering them benefits. Uh, not to mention the rising minimum wages are killing some of these small businesses in California, which is currently our hottest market. I actually placed four kiosks last week just in California. The minimum wage is now uh, $14 and in January 1st gone to $15.50. So all of these problems can be eliminated by deploying self-ordering kiosks. 
I um, want to throw a couple statistics out for you. In a square survey, 73% of restaurants said that they are having a labor shortage. And the National Restaurant Association also says that number is actually as high as 84%, which is outrageous, 84%. Um, Forbes says 65% of customers would prefer to visit a restaurant if they had self-service kiosks. Um, in addition, kiosks increase revenues for restaurants. The ticket sizes are on average are 12 to 20% higher when people order on a self-order kiosk rather than through a cashier. And uh, 29, since COVID, 29% of consumers say they prefer contactless payments like payment kiosks. So if you know a fast casual restaurant that is struggling with staffing, once they increase their average ticket size and give their visitors a much better experience, you can call me at 561. 609-6405 or rsmith at touchsuite s-u-i-t-e dot com. I can fix all of their problems. Okay, thank you. Glenn, I forgot to mention that at the end of the meeting, I'll send out a spreadsheet with everybody's contact information to every, for everybody that was here. So you'll yeah, get it. Think, I think everybody's met, uh, is on this you sent me the thing about the networking groups, so yeah, um, I, I, yeah. Yes. yeah, it has almost everyone I from who's in the group that I that is here today. And I keep looking because they're giving me the information, and I go, okay, I got all these numbers. <laughs> okay, good. All right, so. uh, Debbie, the only one Debbie today. <laughs> and she's good morning, good Debbie Tanto, Dental Builders, and. Uh, I am partner with my husband in Dental Builders. He has been in the area building for over 40 years. I joined him about 20 years ago. And I actually have a GC license myself. We are a woman-owned business. And I am also a lead AP, which is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, um, accredited professional. And we focus on commercial projects. We love hospitality, especially restaurants. We design build. So we love taking a project from concept to completion. We basically um, get the design team together, which includes John Marinick all the time, so important in restaurant design, and then uh, the architect that usually we actually talk about who to use for each project now. Um, and we have an engineering firm in-house. So we do the design and then we help with the budgets and then we bring it through, um, of course, the permitting and then to construction. And we also uh, focus on healthcare, which is very similar to hospitality these days because they want a, a nice feeling, not an institutional feeling. So they're putting in restaurants and they're putting in um, improving areas to make them feel nicer and more upscale and not like you're um, at a hospital, more like you're at a hotel. And we also build industrial as well as um, government projects. And we, we, are, we have projects everywhere from Princeton, Florida, which is near Homestead, all the way north to Delray. And, and um, we, with restaurants, we're, we want to meet the owners, um, especially multi, like a restaurateur that has a group of restaurants and wants to keep growing. Um, but we also deal with a lot of first time restaurant owners and, and really have to educate a lot, which we have been um, dedicated to. They don't always listen, but we try, <laughs> we try. So thank you. Oh, one last thing, very involved with the community, um, the Florida Restaurant and Lodging Association. I'm on the board as well as the Greater Fort Lauderdale Chamber of Commerce and the Florida Design and Construction Professionals. So thank you. Hey, thanks. Where'd Johnny disappeared? Put out, a, put out an APB on John Marinek. Uh, I'm going to do his, I'm going to do his because it's, it ties into what you do. John Marinek is a kitchen designer. He designs kitchens all over the world and works closely with people like Debbie and uh, restaurant equipment dealers. And the reason I'm saying that now is that, uh, Robert, with what you do, Debbie and John are, uh, you know, be a great connection for you. You know, to, to kind of um, expand on that is that John is such a valuable player on the design team because most architects really don't know all the ins and outs of the restaurant equipment and how to lay it out in the electrical and plumbing. And he helps the architect a lot and make sure that it makes sure that the, the, uh, the 
the construction documents are designed correctly. And if they're not, it's, it's a huge issue. And I'll give you an example. Um, the architect didn't, or it was actually the engineer didn't spec the um, electrical right. And that's, and that's because they took that over and they should have had John do it. And then it would have been right because he understands the equipment and how it works. Also, he's not attached to one dealer. So he's going to try to um, get the client the best equipment for the best price. And it's really, he knows how to scale the equipment. And, and sometimes we, for example, we just went into, um, we just got a project, Unity, Fort Lauderdale, and they're building a commercial kitchen. And it was a situation where they had oversized equipment and then they didn't have things that they needed. So they, we could have gotten into construction. It would have been a mess. So he fixed that for them and he was worth every penny. Okay. Quite a testament and you're absolutely right. We've known him for 20 plus years and you and him, the team together, you can't lose. You're both uh, top notch. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Peter, good morning. Good morning. Are you able to hear me? Very low. There you go. Very, Very low. low. Oh, this, this will be better. Is this better? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, better. Now you're Are on you mute. There? No, no, but now worse. Now you're on mute. Uh, hey. My name is Peter Robinson. I'm a audio specialist, as you can tell. <laughs> and uh, I'm a business broker, a business intermediary, Boca Raton, Florida. I work without the state of, I work within the state of Florida. I've been doing it for approximately 15, 20 years. And uh, I'm very good at bringing people back to the table. That's what my job is. When the buyers and sellers don't want to talk anymore, uh, and the deal falls apart. It's my job to, it's my job and my responsibility to bring everybody back to find a common ground. And I will tell you that the majority of the time, most people cannot sell their own business. They take it too personal. They, they, you, you have to be able, you have to be a little thick skinned because it's very difficult to deal with. Your first offer is usually very, very low. And then the seller says, I don't want to deal with that party anymore. So I work with restaurants and other types of businesses. My phone number is 561-445-8198. If someone is considering selling or buying a business, I would be glad to have a discussion. Okay, thank you. Uh, are you finding an uptick in, in businesses for sale now? It's, it's very interesting. Um, there are about 500 restaurants for sale in Florida approximately right now. And they range anywhere. I, I will see, see that there's still a continuing influx of asset sales that uh, restaurants, uh, you know, post pandemic and employee, -ish, employee problems. And then there also is a, uh, a new, um, a, uh, a new on, on, uh, onslaught or on uh, increase in new restaurants. By the way, I've become a, uh, uh, a, a, uh, a seller of a franchise called Yo Nuts. It's a new uh, donut franchise. I believe I uh, may be the only party in Florida at the moment that can sell it. And uh, it's a very successful hot franchise. It's supported by one of the parties from the Shark Tank. What is the name of it? Yo Nuts. Yo Nuts. Okay. Because there's Why another I'm... one we were trying to work with called Moki Nut. Moki Nut. Well, I can put you in contact with these people if you'd like to touch base with them. Sure. And also Moki Nut, I need to follow up with her, but I think her space fell through um, because it was going to be a first generation restaurant and there were too many costs involved. So she's going to be looking for, she signed up as a franchisee, so she's going to need a location. And she was um, plantation. She was looking in plantation. 
We can talk. My pleasure. Okay. Um, Terry, are you around? All right, I'll do mine and then she'll come back, hopefully. Uh, I'm Howard Appel. I'm founder and publisher of today's Restaurant News. We've been publishing since 1996. And we, are, we started out in print and now we are an all digital publication. And we also, along with the printed publication, we offer email marketing video email marketing, uh, restaurant leads reports, and of, of course, the networking groups. Uh, what I wanted to mention, um, um, you know, with, with the hurricane that hit the West Coast, a lot of restaurants got hit badly. A lot of them got wiped out. And a lot of them were in business in 2020 and 21. And I, you know, I say this every week, but you know we're trying to try and help some some of the people who were around during the COVID and now the hurricane. Uh, there is a program by the government called the ERC, which is not a loan. This is uh, we'll call it a grant or a refund. If you had W two employees during the pandemic years of twenty and twenty one, the federal government will refund you up to $26,000 per employee. Uh, we've been working with several different companies. Uh, I have been able to get many companies refunds, uh, 170,000 on one, uh, 140. Uh, I'm working with one that's, uh, I, won't, I don't want to say the amount, but it's, uh, six figures, seven figures, uh, it, and it's not. Like I said it's not a loan. So if you're, if you are interested in doing that, there's no charge to find out whether you qualify. All you have to do is go to our website, which is trnusa.com, and fill out the the form. Uh, so they'll, they'll let you know whether you qualify and an associate of ours will call you and walk you through the process. It's, it's a lot of collection of, uh, back paperwork, but it's well worth it. Uh, Terry's trying to help a new member get on. So she'll be back. Terry does the restaurant leads report. Uh, which is a report that we send out on a monthly basis, which gives you the information of which restaurants are under construction and which restaurants have just opened and uh, follows the process from shovel in the ground to grand opening. And a lot of people get it, a lot of people here get it. And uh, it's very, very worthwhile for the price. It's incredible. And anyway, uh, you know, we've, we talked about, Jeff, are you there, Jeff Krantz? I am. Why don't you give us your intro? Uh, Jeff Krantz, CPS processing, credit card processing uh, for the last uh, 25 years. Any type of electronic transaction that's necessary, we give at the lowest prices possible. We set you up with equipment and uh, we follow it up constantly. Uh, we've been in involved with First Data, NPC World Pay, and TSIS since the beginning. And uh, uh, we have thousands of accounts throughout our, our system. We do business with restaurants all over the country and we're um, available just if you just need information or if you need more. We, are, we, we approach every single situation as if it were whether it be a small business or a large business, the exact same way. We give you the lowest prices possible. Thank you. Tell us how our viewers can get in touch with you. Our phone number is 954-473-1819.
and our um, where's our cocardps.com. Our uh, we are at cocardps.com. Uh, you can get all the information there, or if you just want to find out more about Cocard, just type in Cocard and you'll get our, our whole group name all over the country. We have uh, representatives in every state just about. Uh, some of our biggest offices are in Chicago, Tennessee, Texas, and the New York metropolitan area. Uh, if you need any help getting a hold of anybody in any specific area, please call me, 954 473 1819, or call my cell, 954 232 6619, and I'll direct you to the right place. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Terry, I tried to give you your uh, intro, but go ahead and do it. No, 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 no. I heard you. Did James get on? No. We had, oh, he's coming God. on. We have a new gentleman coming on, and I, I'm sorry, but I couldn't find the it's, thing. Uh, I had to go on my Outlook. And it's... No, 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 no. I already did it. He okay. should be on any second. Um, Terry, today's restaurant news. Uh, everyone uh, pretty much knows what we do, except for our new gentleman, and welcome. We're happy to have you. Um, I handle the uh, monthly leads report in the office here. Uh, we gather the information all month that we put together for Georgia and for Florida, two separate reports. We've started adding a little bit of the Carolinas um, and some of the other states close by as I'm getting press releases daily. So I thought, you know what, let's just add a few more of those in you're going to get the uh, owner's um, email, phone number, address. And many times you'll hear the uh, somebody will call me and say, but you sent me info at, and but they don't understand. That goes directly to the owner many times. Many times it doesn't. But then I can go and do further research, have someone help me, and I can get uh, another email address for you if needed. So those come out. There's 40 to 70 in each state a month that are brand new, plus updated from the month prior that we have. Some we've left on, some we've taken off. Um, but if you need prior re uh, reports, we do have them just in case. I'll be happy to send anyone a sample that uh, would like one, uh, just uh, call us or go on our website, trnusa.com, and there's a form there, our phone number's there, call, and I will take care of it. Have a great weekend. Okay, thanks. Did I miss anybody? No. Okay. Where's James? He, wa he wanted to be on so bad. Um, he's Howard, got I was just going to ask if I can... I never gave my contact information at the end that I realized okay. you can't find it anywhere. Uh, yeah, I was going to double back to you, so go uh, ahead. I was also going to say uh, the ERTC credits, uh, absolutely everyone should take a look at it. There is, uh, it's our financial division does it also. And we've, we have so many clients that were like, I don't qualify, I don't qualify. And then it turns out they do. So I know that you do it. So any company that they know, they should call you. It's worth looking at. All the yeah, time. I, one of my clients is actually getting one hundred forty thousand back. Told me that they didn't qualify. I said, yep. "Just fill out the form. Just exactly. go to my website. Just fill out my form, and then we'll tell you." And you don't charge anything until until you get money back, right? right? Exactly. So um, it's worthwhile. But my uh, the company is Worksite. The email, um, not, not the email. My, my email is glenn at worksiteemployee.com. The website is www.worksiteemployee.com. And my cell phone, which is the best way to reach me, is 954-856-5877. And I look forward to working with all of you. Um, and I can't wait to tell you guys a little more about what, what I do. And I want to know about what you guys do also a little more. Thank you. Well, we're going to... I got a couple of things just to bring up. I got a, an email this morning from a restaurateur asking me uh, how does an auctioneer work with somebody who has an existing business but is behind on their rent? So basically heading towards an asset sale. Pretty much, right, Peter? 
um, and I'm, you know we, we're going to start to see a lot of that and based on what we've talked about before the supply chain issues the uh, inflation shipping costs and rising prices i want i really want to ask you folks do you still see prices rising as quickly as they were several months ago and our shipping costs coming down you know from overseas anybody i'm sure i'm sure the uh, three amigos can answer something on that uh, prices we're definitely starting to see pricing flattening out compared you know the worst uh off the top of my head was that april may june period definitely august to september uh it looks like food prices are starting to flatten out or the curve is starting to flatten out uh things i don't see them quite coming down yet unless you look at specific products here and there you might see some things trending down but the overall trend is still up it's just not nearly as aggressive it was in second quarter second quarter i think is what i saw as a little Kevin, you want to add anything to that well i think it i think you're correct and then there's the uh single line items for example poultry we were talking about that this morning uh on our call um and that has skyrocketed 37 percent uh in the last uh two quarters uh so you know there there's I, there are items that are dropping and then there are items like that that are just you know for, for a variety of different reasons is skyrocketing still um and again it's a supply and demand issue it's you know avian flu a number of other another a number of other reasons why a particular line of items of poultry in particular has jumped up so much and so we're we're seeing some randomness to that you know some items drop some items go up but the net net of it is we're still in a very high inflationary market and it's been uh you know it's been challenging for our clients and where we can and where we find the opportunities we're able to you know like we we're talking about potatoes a few minutes ago you know we're able to go in and look at their the whole business uh, and the way they buy and we look at you know individual items and and renegotiate not only the overall agreement but the individual items on on inside of their agreement and that's how we're able to to find the the, the improvements that we make for our client base Jeff, are you still finding a problem getting replacement parts? I got you on mute. You're on mute, Jeff. You put me on mute, that's why. There you go. Um, the uh, uh, getting parts, almost everything that we put out there right now is uh, refurbished equipment. When the few people that can give us uh, new equipment uh that's backlogged all the way back really and the pricing of our equipment is going up as well um and it's, it's amazing because a lot of the older equipment that was supposed to be dated would no longer be in use is those uh manufacturers are keeping that stuff alive and the processors are keeping their options open on keeping all of that equipment uh up and up and running as well it's it's unusual for um, like a VX 520s that are desktops. Uh, they should have been out of date about a year ago and they're still out there because no one can replace them with new equipment. We're waiting for restaurant equipment right now that uh, uh, that's first data equipment that it's, it's backlogged. Yeah. As I was gonna say, Howard, I agree. The technology industry is not caught up yet. It's still a chip supply shortage. There's still a lot of halts uh, in China, which most of that is made. And it's going to take years for the U.S. to start manufacturing that because those facilities to build are very difficult to be very the, the cleanliness that they need and et cetera. So it takes a long time to build a manufacturing facility in that capacity. So we're probably years away from a solution on that. I mean, it is stuff is starting to come in, but not at the rate to catch up for the backlog. No. Debbie, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I just interestingly, we just did a blog on on this for the construction industry. And what 
we've seen as of um, the midterm is that there's an increase of 20.4% year over year. And the, I'm sorry, the cost of materials and labor continue to increase at the same time. In fact, building materials prices increased 20.4% year over year and haven't and have risen 33% since the start of the pandemic, the pandemic. So I guess it's gone down since the pandemic, but it's still increasing too much, double digit. And then <clears throat> according to Caldwell Banker, Richard Ellis, the world's largest commercial real estate services and investment firm has their construction cost in index forecasting a 4.1% year over year increase in construction costs by year end 2022 as labor and material costs continue to rise. And then some specifics are like paint, 50% um, increase since the beginning of the pandemic, concrete, um, and it's hard to get concrete, believe it or not. Sometimes we have to wait on our jobs. And this has increased by 9% this year. And then transportation is a big issue. It's, it's costly still. And, and the price of diesel fuel increased by 13% from January 2021 to April 2021 and expected to continue to increase in the coming months, increasing the cost of trans, transporting building materials and construction to construction sites. So that's kind of a summary of what's happening with your, your restaurants that are getting built and uh, renovated. So I, I would like to add something to that for the restaurant tour. In the state of Florida, the restaurants are the highest um, businesses that are sold. More restaurants are sold in Florida uh, on a regular basis than any other type business. Uh, in fact, uh, for every restaurant that is, is having difficulty, another one goes in immediately, immediately. So taking into account all these factors, um, the restaurateur um, needs to either bring in experts like people here to be able to uh, catch up with the business environment. They need to become an expert in running their business. But I will tell you that uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, people love to eat. They're going to go out to restaurants. It's a source of entertainment. So uh, again, I think the restaurant business is in transition and there's great hope for it. Okay, anybody else have any thoughts on that? Okay. Um, what I'm going to try to do today is, is uh, we're going to try to, uh, there's an option here on Zoom called breakout rooms where we can uh, have the com computer, uh, in this case, probably three rooms where we can get to talk to each other on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but more often than we do here. De Debbie, did you have something you wanted to say? Oh, no, I oh, the hand is still my up. hand, oh, sorry. Okay, all right. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna try to do that and uh, I'm going to schedule it for 10 minutes. If you, if the, if the uh, Zoom program doesn't allow you to come back to the meeting, that's fine. Uh, thank you all for coming today. I'm going to stop recording also because otherwise there'll be a blank screen. But you know, thanks for coming today. Hopefully, we'll see you at the show in Orlando next week, and uh, it'll be a successful show for all of us. And then the Pizza Summit show the following. following, which is huge. It'll be at the convention center. So we have a booth there also. Or in what city? That's oh, on the 9th and 10th. In Orlando. In Orlando. Orlando. At yeah. the Orlando Convention Center in the West Wing. Uh-huh. Glenn, thank you for coming. I hope to see you again. Uh, Robert, thanks for coming back. And uh, let's try this out. Hopefully this works. First, let me stop recording. And again, thanks you all for coming.